Hey, what's up guys, Dan here. Today we're doing an unboxing of the Canon 11 to 24 millimeter F4L. Now, I bought a few extra lenses this year because Canon's prices were about to increase due to fluctuating economies in Japan and Canada where I lived. It made sense to buy a few lenses that I knew I was gonna buy in the future anyway and get them while the price was a bit lower. The 11 to 24 was the first one of these to come in and I'm really excited to try this out. This is the widest rectilinear lens in the Canon lineup. 11 millimeters is crazy wide. So uh, this is a really optically interesting lens. The Canon have been on a bit of a tear in the last few years creating these amazing new lenses. We've had really innovative designs like this one, the 200 or 400 with the built-in extender, macro lenses with extra Im um, image stabilization axes, things like that. They've really been doing a great job with Canon lenses. And for me, it's the biggest reason that I'm a Canon shooter. So to get the widest lens for landscapes and some interesting perspectives on my sports and adventure photography, this is really exciting. So let's take a look in the box, see what we've got. Okay, I switched the camera around so we can get a bit of a closer look at this. Um, you know, as you can tell right away, this is a pretty big box for, uh, you know, a black lens. I would expect this kind of size of box from one of the white ones, a 100 or 400, uh, was the previous one that I unboxed, and that was in a, a box about the same size. So right away, you get the impression that this is going to be big. Um, I obviously know how big it is. I have handled one before I bought it, but it's still quite surprisingly large here. So um, let's pop open the box. We've got the usual uh, warranty manual. Not too much to know about this really uh, from the manual side of things. On the top we have a plastic lens cap. So this obviously is a different style of lens cap to the normal uh, clip-on ones. This is because the, as we'll see when we get the lens out, the bulbous front element of the 11 to 24. So we've got a special uh, special cap there. I hope this stays on better than the similar cap from the 8 to 15 fisheye lens. They had a similar thing and it's it always falls off. Uh, so I hope they've learned from that one. Uh, we've got the bag, pretty big bag again actually. That's probably the biggest of these style bags that Canon give out. I will never ever use this. It'll go right back in the box until the day I sell this lens, if I ever sell it. Um, let's see. Okay. All right, I'm gonna pull the whole, see if I can pull the whole foam thing out here because the lens is wedged into this packaging. Okay. So the plastic bag there. Plastic, uh, I guess that's the disposable plastic cap. And here is the lens. Wow, look at that thing. That is huge. Um, right, let's put the cap on it so you can see the full size. That's the, the full size there. Let me just hold that in my hand so you can get a bit of an impression. I actually pulled uh, 16 to 35. So before my uh, wildlife, uh, my landscape lens was mainly this 16 to 35 F4L. Really compact lens, 77 mil front thread to it, um, but still not a small lens. I mean, you can see it's a decent size in my hand there. I'll compare this to the 11 to 24. Uh, it's a serious difference and I'm not sure the exact specs, but just by hand holding it, it's about twice the weight for this 11 to 24 here. So um, you can see that huge bulbous front end there, which is necessary to get such a wide angle. And of course the big difference between these two is filters go really nicely on the 16 to 35 screw on filters. Um, we can put polarizers on there, neutral density filters. Really hard to put filters on this. There are a couple of companies, Wonder Panna being one of them. Uh, I know Lee filters are making something as well. And the filters needed to cover this wide angle on the front of this lens is huge. I mean, they're about this big. They're much bigger than a dinner plate. So impractical for most people to use filters. Although I believe, yep, here we go. So actually in the back here is a gelatin filter slot. So it's probably hard to see in the video, but the little slot here, you can cut a square of uh, filter material, plastic filter material and put that in there. But I'm not sure if I'll try that or not. I think I might just 
uh, leave this for sort of non-filtered usage and use the 16 to 35 if I need filters. So um, I don't think there's anything more to show from an unboxing standpoint there. Just really the size of this thing. Oh, it's an interesting little note. There is a flat section on here, which I presume is so you can put it on the table and it doesn't roll away. So it'll roll if you uh, give it a good push, I guess, but eventually if you put it down that way, it'll actually rest. That's the first time I've seen that. It makes sense. It's very bulbous, heavy front end here, which could definitely uh, cause it to roll a little bit. So that's, that's good thinking. On the side, just a AF, MF switch, no image stabilization on this lens, of course. And uh, the, the ring that says 11 to 24, that is uh, insanely wide. I'm really, really looking forward to, to getting out and shooting with this. So um, give the uh, video a like, give us a thumbs up, follow on YouTube and, uh, and check out the blog as well because I'll definitely have some content uh, relating to this lens on there. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.